In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore a PDP 1134A vintage computer. Currently working through quite a lot of faults in the CPU. CPU spread across these two cards and um, it's got all manner of uh, faults and um, it's been a case of uh, one step forward, two steps back. But that's fairly typical of this type of repair when you're resurrecting a machine of this age it may appear to work and then it will start developing faults and indeed this particular unit it appeared to boot uh, when I first uh, started working on it or at least once I'd carried out a few minor repairs uh, but I knew there were quite a few faults left I did say in the video I knew there were uh, still faults existing and uh, under fault condition a lot of the circuitry is not active and as you start to repair the faults and different parts of the system start to be woken up uh, quite often you'll get failures in the parts that you're resurrecting and uh, new faults will start to appear and that's very much been the case with this repair and in the previous video I was looking at a fault with the memory management system so this is part of the schematic for the memory management and um, the way the memory management works on this is when you activate it when you enable it uh, you can uh, remap 4k blocks of RAM into other physical address spaces and uh, on top of that you can on a block by block basis set rules for access whether it's read write um, read only write only that sort of thing and uh, it gives you good control and uh, memory protection for certain areas so if you're running uh, multiple uh, user systems and or multiple programs you can keep the two parts completely separate um, but this wasn't working or at least it, it was kind of being activated when it shouldn't have been if you want to use memory management then you have to uh, your software has to explicitly load all the vectors and the, uh, the, the values required uh, for your particular system when you boot up it just contains random data but the memory management was actually uh, in operation even though it was in theory switched off and the memory management is controlled through a particular register and you access that register through address uh, 777572 or virtual address 177572 and it, um, it's defined here as a register so it's actually this register here that we are talking about at that address and it's bit zero we're interested in you can't read it but it's uh, it just says e -en -e enable and um, it's the memory management enable bit uh, and although this looks like a single register it's not it's really a collection of circuits that are all accessed through a common address and bit zero is actually this arrangement up here it's a, a latch and some gates now when we tried writing to and reading from the register we could change bit zero it was being set to zero and in fact it's set to zero whenever you use control start or control boot it uh, always starts the CPU up in um, in basic uh, memory uh, addressing mode uh, and then you have to your software has to explicitly load the uh, vectors etc and then put it into memory management mode but it should have been uh, setting this bit to zero and it was so that latch was working but when we read it back it also said zero so it turned out the fault was in this gate and although the value being read back was correct um, it wasn't actually propagating that through the rest of the system and memory um, uh, management was active all the time I've got the system set up at the moment so we've got the scope the yellow trace is looking at that uh, gate output so this is the um, it's, it says relocation uh, enable but it's uh, effectively in this case it's memory management enable so I'm going to turn the PDP on I won't start the fan for this it's going to test it for a few seconds and we'll try um, writing to that gate and see if the value on the gate output changes before it wasn't changing it was staying uh, high all the time so we'll turn this on and it should be low which it is before it was going high and what we can now do is try writing to that register so um, it's as I say defaulted to the off state which is what it should have done and if we now go to 777572 
load that address. I'll try setting a value of 1 in that register and it should cause that line to go high, so the yellow tray should go high. So we'll try depositing that and indeed the signal's gone high, so memory management is enabled. If I try pressing Control Start, you can see that the bit is cleared and that that propagates through the gate. Okay, so that's now working. One other thing that um, I also had to fix uh, to get this to work is if we look at the schematic again, I don't know if you can actually read this, but there's a line coming in that says um, enable maint and it's um, part of the uh, maintenance diagnostic system and one thing you may have noticed in earlier um, videos is that when I went into uh, maintenance mode, that's why I press control 1 on the console, the maintenance LED never came on. So I'm just going to move the camera down so you can see it. Okay, so sorry for any flicker that's on the display, there's nothing I can do about this. The uh, shutter speed of my camera is automatic, I can't change it, and sometimes it flickers and sometimes it doesn't, depending on uh, the mood the camera's in. If I now turn this on, um, previously if I went into maintenance mode, it was going into the maintenance uh, software or firmware, but it wasn't illuminating this, and that's part of the problem that we were having, that that signal wasn't propagating through the processor. Uh, whereas if I now press Control 1, notice that the maintenance LED does come on, and if I exit it goes out, and it's now reliable. It wasn't coming on before, so uh, obviously uh, that's another fault that I cleared up as part of this. It was just the same gate causing the problem. Uh, okay, so once I'd done that, um, I was uh, hoping to have made some forward progress, but what actually happened was um, the system would not then run instructions at all. It wouldn't run the test program at all, whereas previously it had been kind of limping along and sometimes it would run the test program, other times it wouldn't. And it's one of those weird situations that two faults, one with the um, memory management being defaulting to on all the time, and then another fault that exists uh, just so happens that it uh, sometimes, depending on the memory address you used, would allow the program to run. So I'm just going to uh, move the camera again so we can see a bit more of what's going on. So on these machines, when I'm confronted with a situation where it won't boot at all, uh, what I do is generally hook up the logic analyzer and uh, try and get some idea as to what's happening on the bus. And in this case, there was nothing happening on the bus at all. It wasn't uh, loading the instruction into the CPU, which it had been doing previously. And so it was immediately halting. And uh, so that was uh, kind of strange. It um, was a, a bit of an issue. So I put the analyzer into timing mode where it doesn't require the uh, clock pulse from the CPU. And the test hour I then normally carry out is to load a value of 5000 in, as an instruction into various memory addresses and uh, see what happens. And that instruction should just clear the R0 register. It's a very simple instruction, doesn't do too much, just accesses the scratch pad memory, which I had previously tested. And then um, on the analyzer, I could see it was actually reading the value, but then um, it wasn't uh, always reading it at all addresses. So what I then do is load, or uh, write a very short program, puts the value of 5000 into incremental addresses. And I run that at some point, if there's an issue with um, memory mapping, then at some point um, it fails and the processor will halt. So I'm just going to uh, switch on the logic analyzer, load that program, and then we'll run it and you'll see the result. So looking at the analyzer screen, what I've done is start up the PDP and I've loaded a value of 5,000 into the first 1,000 uh, memory locations, starting at address zero. And um, what I will do now is, um, on the analyzer, I've set the trigger at address two. So when we see address two, if we see address two, the analyzer should start uh, collecting data. So I've as I say, loaded 5,000 into the first 1,000 memory locations, we'll arm the analyzer, and now I'm going to set the address to zero on the PDP, and I'm going to try and actually run that code. And all we should do is go through uh, all the addresses I've set, 
until it runs off the end of the code and it should be reading 5000 from each of those um, addresses. Okay, so you can see that we've uh, been through this and I'll just set this to zero. And you can see at address two, we were getting a value of 5000. Same with four. Six is still reading 5000. And all it's doing is going through incremental addresses. Uh, it's in Octal, of course, uh, how I have this set at the moment. And it's reading 5000 from each of these addresses, which is fine. Um, but if we keep scrolling across, what we're looking for is if any of these fail. Now, normally I would do this in blocks. I wouldn't do every single address, but just to give you some idea as to the sort of testing you can do. And if we keep scrolling across, you can see it looks fine, still looking fine. And uh, I'll show you the um, test sheet I normally use for keeping track of this in a few minutes. And as I say, what we're looking for is uh, to see if any of these um, locations are unreadable. Okay, so I've got to address um, octal 376 and um, notice the address, the uh, data value there is 5000. The next address um, should of course also contain a value of 5000, um, but notice it's actually address 0. And if we keep going, we get to address 2. So it's wrapped around and now 4, 6, so obviously that's not right, it should be um, so continuing to increment the address and if we go back and you look at um, value 376 octal hopefully that's um, ringing some alarm bells for anyone familiar with octal and um, what I'll do now is just move the camera and uh, we'll try and figure out what may be causing this okay so if you're not familiar with octal then um, this sheet will hopefully make things a bit clearer um, octal is best thought of as blocks of three bits so each digit in octal is three bits and in hex it's four bits so we start by just um, effectively setting each of the bits to a one and then to a zero and we make sure that the resulting number that's seen is correct and uh, what we're finding is when the first eight bits were set the value was correct it was reading the correct address um, but once it tried to set bit 9, and uh, so that's um, address 8, um, when it tried to set that um, bit, it wrapped back round to the start. So in other words, um, it were kind of limited here to 8 bits of memory addressing. Now the reason this was kind of working before, it's not a new fault, I think this fault already existed, but because the memory management was kicking in when it shouldn't have done, it just happened to be adding um, a bank offset and it allowed us to access certain areas of RAM but now we've fixed that problem and memory management is largely off I don't know if it's completely off yet but uh, now that's not interfering anymore um, the system cannot read anything over um, the address of 376 anything above that it wraps around and starts repeating itself so I found that I could actually run the test program from um, an address of zero or anything below uh, 376 octal uh, it doesn't work because it still can't um, access the serial port um, but at least it will then run so the next question is well what's causing this uh, apparent new problem and I think it is partly new problem this what we're going to do now is uh, do a, a very simple test and I had done this test already one of the first tests that I carried out uh, and that is to see if we can access the scratch pad memory. So as I've mentioned before, the um, CPU breaks the data path up into four bit slices. So this is part of the ALU. And at the top left hand corner here, we have this device and it's actually a 16 by four bit latch. Uh, so you can look at it as uh, kind of an SRAM. Um, and there's one of these, there's four of these sheets in the entire ALU, but they're all very similar. And you have data coming in, the ALU, some multiplexers, and then the output onto the bus. So um, this is the scratch pad memory, and there are four of these. And most likely it's uh, something to do with these that have failed. It's not necessarily these themselves and um, it could be any of the multiplexers or control circuits but because um, it's an exact 4-bit block in fact it's two 4-bit blocks it's the two other bits 
uh, two upper blocks that are uh, causing a problem. Uh, most likely one or more of these has failed, but as I say, it's not necessarily these, it could be the uh, multiplexers. So just to clarify a point here that may cause some confusion, if you look at the address bus, it's a 16-bit virtual addressing that we're using, so 16 bits in the uh, data word, but 18 bits uh, physical address. So when you look at the address lines, you'll notice that although we've got these um, four bit blocks, uh, the first one starts at um, address two. Address zero and one are on this device over here, so it's a completely separate part of the path. So it might seem strange that, well, why is it the uh, eighth bit that is starting the problem? Because the eighth bit is halfway through uh, one of these blocks. But when you look at the input to these, and then look at the output, you'll notice that this will actually just start at zero. So the data being fed into this does start at zero, it's the virtual address, and this is what uh, creates the physical uh, interpretation of that address. So although these are split, the four bits are in uh, consecutive four bit blocks in the way that they're handled by the system. So what we can do is actually test this scratch pad memory to see which uh, particular blocks are working, if any, and which aren't. And the easiest way to do that is to just write into the um, scratch pads registers. I've already done this test and it worked fine, but that was before the memory management was interfering with things, or rather that's when the memory management was interfering with things and now it's not, we may get different results. So the first address is at, if I need to stop this, it's still running. So the first address is at 777700 and that's the address of the R0 register. So we'll load that, examine that, and it's at zero, which it should be. We've been zeroing it for the last five minutes after all. And what we'll try and do now is set a value with all the bits set to one. So we'll uh, try and deposit that, which we have. We're still at the same address. We'll try and examine this, but notice that the address that is showing is 377. So that's the maximum address that we can represent in the eight bits that we think are working. The rest should be showing a 1777, but it's not, they're all zero. So we'll do the same thing now with the uh, other registers. So we're at the address of the first one. We'll try and deposit zero into all of them. I'm just gonna keep pressing deposit here until we get a bus error, meaning a run off the end of the registers. So we've got a bus error, we've run off the end of the registers. So this should all be set to zero. Look at the address display, 720, which is correct. The last address for the scratch pad is at 777717, and 20 is the next address up. So if we now go back to our start address, and we uh, examine these, they should all be zero and as you can see they're not. And the fact that the upper bits are showing something is a bit um, disconcerting. It means that we're not able, it could be that we're not able to write to the memory rather than it's uh, a case of um, the memory itself is faulty. And just as a final check, we'll try to write a value of all ones to these uh, addresses. So we'll try depositing these to all the scratch pad locations. Go back to the start and examine these. First one again is not showing correctly, neither is that one. And notice these upper bits aren't changing, so it could just be a fault with the multiplexer rather than the um, RAM itself. Okay, so we've got a better idea what's going on now. And so what I will do um, for the next video is we'll hook up the logic analyzer to the scratch pad RAM and during this test when we're trying to write to it uh, we'll see if the data is getting to the, um, the scratch pad and if it's not we'll try and figure out why.